Back on now with Aaron Silverstein and James Curtis, our guests from CMH Label Group, the team behind Bridgerton's classical pop covers. It's time for You Asked, where we answer questions from our community. So you guys ready to answer some questions? Bring it up. Well, I guess you've been doing that all the way through, I guess, but (laughs) these ones are from our community. All right. So, which was VSQ's favourite song to compose or perform? Ah, uh, from from the Bridgerton stuff or from anything at all? Well, I, that's just what the question says, so I guess it's, it's an open book. I, I, it might not be a song. It could be almost any song off of the last Bjork album that we did. Ar- arranging that record, though, it was a little tough, was a lot of fun and was great work. That's just a great artist to, to to get to play in that sandbox of her music. So for me, it would be anything from that Bjork album. Yeah. Or, uh, what's that Daft Punk? Is it Touch? There's a Daft Punk. Oh, track. that too. That's actually a perfect answer too. Yeah. The studio, uh, version is, the studio version we did is good, but our live version is so, we've refined that thing. It is so perfect now. It's, it's also cool uh, the just translating Daft Punk to strings, right? Yeah. That's, a, that's just a cool, you know. So. Yeah. It was kind of sweet seeing their farewell video end with that song because that song is very, very personal for us as well. So that was really cool. I was going to say, you're going to have to carry the torch on now that they've split. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, Daft Punk music to cover that we haven't, so I'm down for that. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Uh, so what was your reaction to the overwhelmingly positive experience or positive response from audiences around the world? Excited. It was yeah. overwhelmed I, is a good way of putting it. One one thing that was really cool, and I think the whole team felt it, was people heard us on Bridgerton and then checked us out, let's say on, you know, a, a Spotify or a DSP or something, and they were like, look at this huge catalog. And we just opened up this you know, treasure chest, then we're just going to start going through it. And it's just feeling like it landed because of the show, you know, but also because there's just, there's a lot to explore in the catalog. And that was, that was really cool. It was like initial support and then like continued support, you know, and that's awesome. Yeah. It was the, the seeing our social media numbers, everything grow was cool. I think one of the things that I sort of loved because I spend too much time on YouTube and you constantly see those things on YouTube where like the comment sections are full of like, oh, this brought me here or this brought me here. And seeing that on a bunch of our music videos, where now all of a sudden people are like, who's here because of Bridgerton? Those kind of things were kind of fun and, and, and cute. You have to think of a better way to say it. it was cute to see that kind of response, you know, because you see it so frequently in so many other places. So to see the placement translate for people so personally, that was fun. I bet. Uh, so how do you decide which projects you will license music to? Oh, whoever gives us the most money. <laughs> <laughs> no, James. No, no, no. I'm <laughs> um, I mean, there's a lot of conversation that goes on there. I mean, Aaron, you, again, you can also speak to that too. But Yeah. Um, well, this, you know, the studio recording stuff, who we cover in the first place, right? James Spearhead's most of that. And it's a group conversation with the VSQ team. And this is unrelated to sync. This is like, what projects do yeah. we want to record? What do we want to work on? And then later down the line, you know, we start to sort of listen to the catalog and say, Ooh, what might fit in a more cinematic film picture use? But we don't necessarily think of that all the time. It's, it's, no. we, we create what we want. Right. And then it's, again, if it's the perfect storm and it all lines up and it looks great on picture, you know, that's, that's the cherry on top. So. Yeah. I tend to think of things very cinematically. Like I said, I wanted to be a filmmaker. So having a chance to do that when we're even making arrangements, that's just a byproduct of how I, how I think. And, and of course, string quartets also just have a wonderfully cinematic quality to them. Um, So that definitely helps when people are approaching us because so many people see the v- inherent value of that. Um, <clears throat> as far as who we do and do not allow to license our material, you know, all joking aside, um, I, 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 we haven't yet been hit with a, uh, a project where we were just like ethically or morally against what was going on. Every time someone approaches us, it seems fun 
It seems to really fit in our world. It seems like they get what we do. Otherwise, they wouldn't be approaching us. Um, and again, that's because we either have this romantic quality or the cinematic quality, and it just kind of works with whatever it is that they've, uh, they've approached us for. And we've done a lot, you know, um, we've been in films and televisions and, th and television shows and, and not just in narrative, but also like, I think some of our earliest placements were in things like, so you think you can dance an American idol and you're just like, Oh, that's fun. That's fun. That's, you're, you're part of the larger musical conversation. So, um, you know, I, I don't think, like I said, I don't think we've hit, been hit with something where we're just like, nah, <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're super grateful. I don't mean to sound cheesy or anything like people reach out to us and say, we really like this recording you did. We want to, how can we get your recording on our project? And, you know, whether at the end of the day it pans out for what, however many number of reasons, if it does or doesn't like that outreach is, is really nice. I appreciate it. And I'm the one going through those, you know, the sync briefs and people reaching out, how do I get your song on this project? And it's just like, that's, that's really validating. That's really cool. You know? Very much so. Yeah. So, yep. Not cheesy at all. <laughs> okay. It must be an amazing <laughs> feeling. Okay. Next question. What do you notice music supervisors look for when licensing music for film or TV? Hmm. Aaron, you want to? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, it, it depends. Certain people have their own style, right? They work within certain types of shows, they, they want certain music cues and right. So everyone kind of has their own world that they live in and operate in. And um, so when you've got soups, music supervisors that, you know, know what they want, then you kind of, you get to work with them or sometimes your catalog doesn't fit and that's okay too, you know? So. Yeah. I think there's a benefit to when we're approached a lot of times, there are a variety of why we're being approached, but we're lucky in that what we do fits so well with a couple of common threads. One is characters in movies and shows are always getting married and they tend to be younger people. So they're always looking for a contemporary song that's been translated to a string quartet because people do that in real life. We're constantly approached for by, by, by just fans who are like, I want your sheet music. Would you play our wedding? Et cetera, et cetera. So therefore, narratively, that works when you're in a show like Gossip Girl or Modern Family, where people want our music for wedding scenes because it makes sense. And then the other side of that, which is where you run into your Bridgertons and your Westworlds and the show like Rain, is people have some sort of narrative juxtaposition that they want to make. You know, this almost sort of anachronistic, like, oh, we're doing a period piece, but we want to evoke something modern. Or in the case of Westworld, it's a sci-fi thing, but of course that sci-fi thing is evoking something, period. So again, that's, that juxtaposition is perfect for what we do. It's classical music, but it's contemporary repertoire. Or, well, sorry, I should say classical instrumentation and contemporary repertoire. So that most of the time, that's what the, it's one of those two things. And then there's other interesting little things that come up as well. Mm, amazing. Uh, what tips do you have for artists trying to license their music? Again, uh, we touched on this a bit earlier. Um, do, do the research, do the homework, right? Know your own material and your own catalog, what kind of sound. Um, if you have lyrics, like thematically, what are you singing or talking about, right? Is it hope and happiness and home or is it not? And you're talking about other things, like make sure that, um, you know, you're, you can advocate for your own material and then figure out where it can live, you know, and find the production company or the team, find the music supervisor who might be working that um, and, and be nice and cordial and <laughs> polite and send them your music and, you know, understand that they're very busy, but that's okay. Like you're trying and you're doing your homework. And if it's a good fit, I think the supervisor genuinely appreciates it, even if it's not the right fit for that show. And they're going to save it. And you might get an email six months, 12 months, two years down the line out of nowhere. Hey, I downloaded this thing. It was on my hard drive. I, it's a perfect thing for this scene. And you might hear from somebody out of nowhere. You know, you just, you never know. So um, yeah, do, do your homework. And I, I guarantee it'll, it'll pay off. Even if that placement doesn't, you'll learn how to do the research. You'll learn how to reach out and you'll refine that process. So yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. James? Yeah. Do the homework, do the work. You know, again, it, it's also depends on 
you know, whether you're working with a label or whether you're working independently, you can then do the research on if there's a firm that can represent you or if there are libraries that you can have your material added to. And those kind of things will also be informed by who you are. That question about knowing yourself, you'll be able to tell if it's, you know, a person or a firm or a rep or whatever that you want to work with, you should understand who it is that's representing your material um, because you don't necessarily want to be led astray. And you also don't want to be sort of placed in a position where you're just, you're just ticking a box for them either. So you want to be able to like, again, this goes back to that authentic self doing the work, knowing yourself, know who it is that you're working with and don't just jump into any situation to have your music represented. You have to do the, um, unfortunately, the business part of show business is key. You have to do the work. Great tips and yeah. be on time if you have a meeting. And be on time. Yep. yep. And, Don't show up. Yeah, and have lots of money. No, kidding. <laughs> okay, uh, last question. VSQ is well known for their style of classical covers of pop songs. Do you have any tips for artists trying to find their niche so that their music is more discoverable to music supervisors? That find a niche and fill it thing is key. There's, I, I think that there's no denying that cover songs are, are one of the key components for music licensing um, and unique cover songs. You know, if you have a gift for interpretation, if you have a gift for arrangement and understanding like the voicings that can be taken from an original piece and restructured to make something unique, that's, that's a benefit. So again, that's a, that's a do your homework and that's a, put the work in kind of thing, you know, uh, some people that just comes naturally. Some people that natural thing to experiment and, and toy around with music comes naturally, but for some that's work. And that, that comes with music study that comes with understanding why a song works and then trying to break it down so you can do something different with it. Yeah. I mean, things that we've touched on before is like your, your music is I can guarantee a hundred percent. You can't guarantee anything in sync, but I can guarantee this a hundred percent. You're not going to get every single brief. You're not going to get every single placement and that's okay. Like you don't have to fit every single music cue out there in the world. It's just, you know, again, not to sound so cheesy, but like make what you want that you're happy with and yep. you're proud of and it'll fit. It'll fit where it needs to. And it shows, you know, when you're really excited about the material, like, People, people can feel it, people know, you know? So I think it, it goes a long way.